Hi there, I am here with Leslie Hart, who is the writer of Three Seconds. Hi Leslie. Hello. So, first of all, tell us a wee bit about the play. What, what is Three Seconds about your Okay, uh, now, so, broadly speaking, mm -hmm. it's about three characters who, um, who are all kind of bound by a mystery. I don't want to give too much away because it's a very much yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're also bitterly divided by this mystery surrounding an event. And they all live in, it's all set in a town at the very top of Scotland, a fictional town, so, uh, <laughs> sort of Caithness area. And um, the play happens on the day that a flood hits and engulfs the town. And, um, and it brings these three characters together and they're forced to confront each other. Yeah. And the truth of what happened an event yes. in the past um, in order to survive it and survive each other. So, um, but you know, when they get together, there's there's a good chance that that's not going to go well. Yes. Yeah. It's a good so that's that sounds really. Is that is that quite? Is that that's a good way. Of, yeah. Because you've got the okay. kids. It's. <laughs> It's, it's a really dramatic play, not to say, but it's quite heightened and dramatic yeah. and it, it's tense and it, there's that between those all those characters. I, I mean, I hope I'm not overstating exciting. things by saying that I, I think it's a thriller. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, and you know, the, the audience will be working things out with the characters. Like, they they kind of, the they all have, um, find themselves in uncertain, Waters. That's not a lot of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Waters, yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 Waters. waters. Yes, waters. <laughs> 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 so, yes, and, but um, essentially, like the kind of. the um, what, what I'm dealing with in the play and what I kind of, I'm obsessed with is the question of. That obsesses me in real life. How do you live with yourself? I mean, it's difficult enough to live with wee daft things that you yeah. might get wrong, or things that you might have been involved in, things that you do deliberately or wrong. But you know, if you find yourself involved in something, or connected with something that's difficult to live with, or um, that you can't forgive other people for, how do you? Yeah. How do you? What do you do then? You either kind of have to survive it, or it, or it, um, and this is your first play. Yes. So we know you um, very well as a successful actor, and you've also you also have been maybe still are a journalist. And you've been journalistic well, a lot. I you? Not so much anymore, but um, that uh, certainly I was very very fortunate to um, to be given the chance to first of all write features mm -hmm. uh, about people in creative jobs for a brilliant website that doesn't, sadly doesn't exist anymore. It was a Channel 4 um, website called 4Talent and um, I got myself involved. The whole ethos of the website was to encourage people to pursue creative ambitions and things and so when I, on tour, I was on Highland tour and I met one of the commissioning editors and it occurred to me that she lived in the middle of nowhere, and, like, mm -hmm. well, not in the middle of nowhere but out you know, in the Highlands somewhere, very remote, and it occurred to me that if she could live there and do this job, then I could be going anywhere and, and do that sort of thing as well. And so I just kind of felt bold, they said, can I come and work for you? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, well, have a go. And uh, and so that kind of started me writing features and things, and I, I interviewed people who did all kinds of creative jobs, which was brilliant. It was fascinating. It anyway. was fascinating. Interviewed lots of writers as well, which I was really because no, no no two writers had the same process, and I thought that was very interesting. Um, but uh, and then I um, uh, pitched a, an idea for a, a, a regular column in my local newspaper, the Press and Journal, which I have to credit Cora Bissett inspired me to do that because she used to have a little um, brilliant little column in the Sunday Herald. I thought, God, I'd love to do that. It was about kind of. Um, trying to make it in London. Uh, oh yeah. So oh, I kind yeah. of I thought. So my, I kind of my idea was sort of a local girl tries to make it in showbiz. Well, it started out as that, yeah. and then and I was just very fortunate that this was kind of serendipity. There was a, a, a long-standing columnist at P and G left and he was replaced, 
and then and they took a chance on me for eight years <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then and in that time it was just a brilliant discipline and every week I had to kind of file a thousand words and it really got me it was really um it really benefited everything it sort of it was sort of fed into all the creative stuff I was doing mm. and if I was doing a play I'd be writing about that and connecting it to trying to make it relevant to the readers and all that sort of thing so it was a great yeah. discipline but um, at the end of the day, I'm not really a journalist, and I have a huge respect to journalists and, and what they do. Yeah. But um, I, I think, as a writer, there was, that, you know, the, the, the playwright in me was kind of <laughs> sort of tentatively going, oh, like, can I? Can I, can I yeah. 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 And it's a uh, co-production with Traverse. Mm -hmm. so you've been working with the director Hamish. With Hamish, yes. How's, how's it been? And how's it been? Brilliant. Being in the rehearsal room. Not as an actor, because I asked Catherine Evans, yeah. oh, I was asking her last week about the transition from director to writer and how she found that. Yeah. Is, it, is it difficult having a different head on or is it...? It's not, it's not at all. I love it. I've had, I've, you know, I've had a brilliant week in a bit um, and it feels very natural actually. And, um, and of course it, it's uh, it benefited a lot for, from having worked on new writing extensively over the last 13 years <laughs> um, and so I'm, I know, kind of know the dynamic of a, <coughs> a, a, a rehearsal process on a new play with a writer in the room and all that kind of thing so um, but uh, no it's, it's great but I mean it helps that Hamish is, is a fantastic director and everybody um, kind of is sensitive to the process and that sort of thing. We're having loads of fun um, and yeah it's felt, it felt like a very natural process. I'm a real collaborator, and that's why I love handing, like I've loved handing this play over, particularly because I'm still pinching myself that it's not just in my head, because this is a new experience for other people to actually claim it, or, or it gives it a reality that is kind of just so novel to me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, you know? um, and it's brilliant that it's kind of that everyone brings something. Everyone has a claim on it and brings something else to it, and I can't wait to feel the audience's response to it as well. I mean, that'll be thrilling, terrifying, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too, I don't feel sick with nerves about that anymore, oh. which is something that, which is a, which is progress. I have to credit the wonderful Nicola McCartney, who um, completely changed everything for me because she was my mentor at Playwrights to do it, and she just. And we had three sessions and it's like everything she told me, I'm not, I mean, no, I'm, this is not flannelling her, everything she told me, every note she gave me was instrumental and it, it, changed, it kind of really pushed things forward for me and there's a couple of things she said that just um, released me from all my anxieties and released me from all the kind of the clutter that uh, uh, like self-doubt and uncertainty and stuff that was getting in the way of me actually just getting on with it. Um, and um, I've said this several times now, but I just think it's so valuable that the thing that she said to me that kind of uh, was like a kind of um, the real trigger or really released me into kind of just writing the piece was um, she said, "Don't put words in the characters' mouths. You know, you know who they are. You know what the situation is. Don't be." Um, intimidated by the, the, the tyranny of the blank screen or whatever, you know, don't, they'll speak when they have to. And so she said, just sit there and, t and even if it takes days, don't start, don't be, um, forced to, like, yeah, to don't, dialogue yeah, the let them speak. yeah, yeah they're that's not, that's it's not, because it's like, it's your question, but it's this, they're inhabiting the world. And, um, in, in, in my writing, that meant, that meant a lot to me, and that kind of really chilled with me. And, uh, and so I just, and then after that, because you know, you, you do the, the groundwork and the preparation, and you know what you want to explore, and you know what the situation is, and kind of what's at stake for everyone, and at the starting point, and then you just let them do it. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of just so liberating because it's actually a lot less effort. It was a bit like when you kind of, it was similar when sort of someone gives you an acting note that makes you kind of like, just just not think this. and not try too hard and you just like, oh, yeah, good job, please. So um, 
so I think that's a, that would that's a great piece of advice for anyone writing drama. Brilliant. On that note, that note of advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs>